Hi everyone! Alrighty, I'm here to share my contribution to Roxy's a travelogue journal. Uh, if you haven't seen her channel, it's Roxy Fur, R-O-X-Y-F-U-R. And this was her uh, this was her journal. It's a it's a gypsy heart uh, travel theme. And what you're to do in it is create, if you haven't seen any of my other videos or if you haven't heard of the group over at Your Paper Pantry, it's super cool. You might want to check it out. It's really fun. Anyways, um, this left Roxy's hands in June and it's making its way through, um, I believe, seven of us. And then when it returns back to Roxy, it'll be all complete with artwork from different um, artists. And she, um, she did a really, really cool theme. And like I said, if you want to check out her channel, she shows how she made it and then what she like explains it more. But it's really cool. On her first page, this is kind of like our in, like our instruction um, page in instruction in slash introduction. There's a cool tag in here that you write um, your name and then the date that you shipped it out. And and then this is really neat. She made this um, online. There's this website. I don't know the, the name of the website. Maybe someone can post it down below if you know. But you can make your own library cards. And um, it's really neat. So she has right here, it's, it says, Furlong Roxanne, a Minnesota writer and artist, along with the help of her artist friends from your paper pantry, documents what it means to have dreams of traveling while illustrating the barriers we place upon ourselves in the form of a circle journal. So that's what um, you're to do in here. So I'm the third person to get it. And these are my pages. Really cool. I had a really good time. So I, <clears throat> I, I haven't traveled much and there are quite a few places that I would love to go to but I figured I'd start with um, the first place I'd really really love to go to and that would be to New York and uh, that's what I've done here. Um, I'll, I'll explain to you what I've done, a couple techniques, and then um, read you some of the journaling I wrote. So the pages look like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. At first they just look like this. And then I took some pages out of an atlas, and I bought it at the 99 cent store. So, you know, it was like totally cool. And I took the California page and then the New York page. I put gel medium all over both pages. I just want you to see what it, you know, what it looked like at first. Put you put gel medium all over and it was really neat because the pages, I got lucky, the pages that I tore out of the atlas fit perfectly on the they were the same sheet size. So, I put the gel medium all over, put the sheets down, rubbed them all over make make sure they were adhered really well, and then it's a cool technique that I learned out of the um a uh, collage uh, book by Claudine Helmuth. Helmuth, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Anyways, she shows you how to do this technique, and I think she calls it paper tearing. It's really neat. So after you've ad adhered whatever paper it is, it's really cool to do it with like um, phone book pages, um, what else, dictionary pages and stuff. So after you adhere it, you take masking tape and you cut off a strip and just kind of randomly put it like across and then you make sure it's like adhered really well. I took a bone folder and I burnished it and then you get one in and you just peel it back and as you do uh, it peels off like you can see right here. I've already written over it but it peels back some of that paper like a really light fine top layer of it so you still see writing underneath um, but it's real faint and it's just really cool so I did that you can't see it as much you know of course under the trees but I did it on on the two pages and then after I did that I let it dry and then I uh, did an acrylic paint wash with a an ochre um, it's a golden paint and I just watered it down really really well and then it did like a, like a fine coat over it and then I let that dry and then I went back with some burnt umber kinda highlighted these spots that were uh, peeled off and then I let that completely dry then I freehanded my trees so what the trees represent is my roots like my roots to the city that I was born in and my state and then the roots um, of my dreams that are in my heart um, places that I want to see so that's what they represent and kinda like the idea that a tree doesn't know 
where it's from. You know what I mean? Like a, like a tree's a tree, whether it's in California, whether it's in New York, and that they're, we're all kind of connected. So I um, did a little doodling around here, all around in black pen, right here where it says Whittier, excuse me, where it says California. I wrote Whittier underneath California. I put born and raised and then just kind of circle like the California so it would stand out and the same thing with the New York and then between because it's I wrote this because what stands between us meaning California and New York is time and money you know raising a young family um, I've already raised my three older children but raising a new young family you know, school and work and stuff you know it's easy to have a lot of um, I don't want to say excuses, but it's easy to have a lot of things that keep you from, you know, from going to places that you'd like. So anyways, um, I put over here, I'm so glad that what keeps us apart is fixable. And then right here down at the bottom, I put, you kind of like when you look at a map, you now it says you are here and it has a star. I did that with a Dymo label. And then over here I put maybe one day here and then a star also. And like I said, I freehanded my tree, and then I ran the trunk through a cuddle bug embossing folder, you know, in which I love the Swiss dot. Kind of inked them up just a little bit to give it some, you know, texture. This little grass, um, little border is a Sizzix. It's a Sizzix die. It was in a, the, the main die was a house, and then it came with just like a little tiny trim. And then I just glued some little flowers just to add color. And then using a Can Company handmade paper collection, I took just two different pattern papers that were green and freehanded my tree actual, you know, like the leaves. Well, you know what I mean. And then I cut these little birdies out of the Cricut and just put the branch and um, two different birds. I was going to write L.A. on this one and N.Y. on that one, but I didn't. Anyways, um... Then I wrote a quote around the uh, outside of the tree part. And this one is by Rosalia de Castro. And it says, I see my path, but I don't know where it leads. Not knowing where I'm going is what inspires me to travel it. And then this is a quote by Miriam, Miriam Beard. And it says, certainly travel is more than the seeing of sights. It is a change that goes on deep and permanent in the ideas of living. So what in, what first got me so interested in going to New York was about 11 years ago, maybe 12 years ago, uh, I ran into an old friend from school and his name, well, we called him Shep because his last name was Shepard. And I had known him. I were, we were friends since like the third or fourth grade. And we were really close friends, really, really close friends. And he was just hilarious. Him and I just had the best time. And we were in uh, the same sixth grade class and we sat next to each other and we used to just laugh. He was just hilarious. And I ran into him all these years, you know, past. And he had, uh, worked for the uh, post office. So he was being transferred, which is what he truly enjoyed. He liked to be transferred because then he got to see different parts of the country. And so this time he was going to New York. And so we exchanged email at ease and then we just kept in touch and um, he met a really, really beautiful uh, girl out there, and, and, you know, he got married. But over the years, like, he would send me pictures. I haven't talked to him, like, in quite a while. But he would send me pictures, and he was so funny. He would, like, take pictures of the most random things. And the pictures that he sent me were just amazing of the city. And he absolutely loved New York. Like, he, he even convinced his sister to move out there. She lived in uh, San Francisco. And I would run into his mom... And I still do to this day. I run into his mom. She was like a room parent, and uh, she was great. I I love her. She was awesome, and uh, I would run into her, you know, now and again. And she would tell me like, you know, what was going on with him. And she said, Oh yeah, my daughter moved out there. He, you know, convinced her. He just loved the city so much. I remember one time he had come to visit, and I had seen him again. And he told me he had never moved back to California. It was like living in a retirement home. So just through the pictures that he would send me, it just um, made me really, really want to visit. And just the way he portrayed it and the, the love he had for it. So on this part, I wrote, it's all Shep's fault. Blame him. 
Ronald Shep Shepard, friend since fourth grade. He is the one who put the dream in my heart. He moved to New York and is living the life he dreamed of. I just want a visit. Please, oh please, just a visit. Shep would send me pictures of his life in New York. They were amazing. I started to dream. So, and then on this side, I wrote a letter to New York and I put, Dear New York, I just want to feel your energy. I want to see your lights, all your culture, and ride in the cash cab. That's a game show. <laughs> I want to play in the water of a fire hydrant, stroll through Central Park, not after dark, S sip coffee in a quaint little cafe, and people watch. Warmest regards, Bean. And um, that's about it. So I really had a great time making this. Um, I think if you watched my last video about the journal that I made. Um, I'm really trying to challenge myself to do different colors, different textures, different techniques and not get stuck in the same rut. With the exception of my Swift Dot Cuddle Bug. You know how I love it. Anyways, uh, that's my contribution. In the last page you could like tuck a little note. Um, this is from one of the other participants. But I just made a little tag with the same kind of tree and I put the month and the year and I put rocks. Oh, what a time I've had. This project has really opened my eyes to a lot of things. So glad I met you, Bean. And it tucks in here, so that's it. And I had a fabulous time making it. So I hope you liked it, hope I didn't ramble too much. And um, yeah, try, um, you should really, really think about maybe joining one of these, they're so much fun. So, um, all right ladies. Thanks for watching and don't forget to be inspired. Bye.